and welcome to the Papa Culture Show, where we dig into the crossroads of the occult and popular culture. I'm your host, Jason Winslade, and my co-host... I'm the co-host, Lil Dorsey. <laughs> we are co-hosts together, and we are presenting our show. This is the third episode of our brand new season. You must have seen our first episode on occult burlesque and our second episode on Coffin Joe. Today, we're going to talk about an old favorite of mine, at least, and maybe of yours. What oh, you definitely think? of mine. I'll stand Buffy. Totally, totally. I've got my Buffy earrings on. All right. Yeah, uh, so we're going to talk about an episode of Buffy and some some Buffy in general, but but a specific episode of Buffy that we think is is relevant to today. Now, we could have done a Halloween episode because we're coming up on Halloween. There's two great Halloween episodes with some great themes in there. But we decided to go a little bit of a different direction and do the episode Gingerbread from season three. I believe it's episode 11. So this would have aired in um, uh, spring of 99, I want to say. Um, spring of 1999 so it's a very uh i think it's a very resident episode um that i, I just re-watched recently uh and, and it, it just really struck me a lot of the things going on that are worth talking about so yeah you so you, you're 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 a you're a buffy fan like me i am i'm totally a buffy fan i have to admit that the whole first season i was like oh that looks stupid and my daughter would prop herself in front of the television and watch it religiously and then finally I was like hey what's this about but ever since then which I guess is over 20 years now I've totally been a, a avid Buffy fan and uh, I just love everything about it I love the intertextuality I love the fact that there's the writing is amazing. The acting is superb. Like I've, I've stand, you know, so many of those actors and actresses from when they were even younger than when they appeared in Buffy. So I just, I just love it. Yeah. I was, I was watching it. I, I think I watched a little bit of the first season back when, you know, we had things like Abel, um, <laughs> long before streaming. And uh, I caught an episode here and there, but I didn't religiously watch it until probably like the second season. And then, uh, you know, from that that point on. Um, and I, I'm one of those people because I was I was in grad school at the time. And then I, uh, you know, eventually came came out of that and was uh, writing and publishing. And I'm <laughs> I don't know if you can see this is my it's backwards, but Buffyologist T-shirt. And no, it's not backwards. It only looks backwards. to you. <laughs> the Slayer <40th> Conference. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> I was part of the the first wave of Buffy scholars back when the show was on. I I, I published an article uh, about you know, Willow and Tara and witchcraft um, in Slay, the first uh, first issue of Slayage, the online international journal of Buffy studies, peer reviewed, no less. Um, and uh, so, as part of that that early early bit of Buffy scholarship and then wound up teaching a course on it at, uh, at DePaul for over a decade and starting off as a Buffy show and then it was a, Joss, a Buffy class and then uh, becoming a Joss Whedon class and it was in the newspaper and this whole thing. Um, published a, a, a articles and a bunch of books as well. So I've been talking about Buffy for a long time. Now I haven't taught the course in quite a while and, and, I, and I'm, I'm retired from DePaul, but um, it's 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 what's funny is that I'm rewatching the show for the I don't even know how many times, but with my daughter for the first time. Well, she she saw it earlier when she was younger, but only got to the season three, and now we're doing it as an. She's the same age as my students were when I taught the class, so it's just kind of funny that we're that's all coming full circle. But as as many Buffy fans know, there was quite a bit of controversy in recent years that has have made a lot of people rethink their fandom and, and their analysis of the show because of, you know, what happened with Joss Whedon. Um, I don't know if you, you heard about that. And... Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of stuff that, problematic. that very problematic. Yeah. 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 Um, and so it, 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 it's been challenging for Buffy scholarship to the, to the point where they, the, the, uh, the, the academic organization that had Joss Whedon's name in it because it was Whedon Studies 
had to go through this whole thing to figure out what they were going to call it because they didn't want to promote him or, or you know foreground him anymore and so they wanted to focus on others contributions and that's what a lot of the fandom i think has done to sort of reclaim the show and say this is about the other writers especially the women like jane espenson and marty knox and and this is about you know the the, the actors who um you know were possibly treated poorly like yeah well definitely treated poorly like charisma carpenter um so what's interesting is that there's uh we're, we're recording this on um october 11th uh and tomorrow october 12th the uh there is going to be an audible series release that was recorded with a lot of the original actors none of the main cast but the the main characters uh you know spike um Tara, Anya, um, especially, you know, people, uh, Cordelia, um, people who actually died. So they're doing this whole multiverse thing as well. So th there's been this kind of reclaiming there too, where even in every, uh, Chris McCarpenter is saying that she's, she's, she feels justified that she's getting the ending. So those of you who watched the show and saw the terrible things that happened to Cordelia on, on the angel show, uh, she's, she's getting to, sort of reclaim this thing. So I guess in this parallel universe, she's she's the Slayer and Buffy never existed or something. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so there's been a lot of stuff, you know, in recent years. Uh, there was a, 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 a reboot comic that was basically Buffy set in, in modern times. I've got the issue here. <laughs> and you can see she's got a cell phone. And <laughs> we just watched the Hush episode. We were like, this episode would be very different if they had actually had cell phones because they could just text <laughs> each other even though they couldn't talk. I think that every episode I watch, I'm like, if they just had the technology and at the time they were cutting edge, you know, so right. here we go. Yeah. If, 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 you know, if the apocalypse comes, beat me was, was a, was a famous line from that. So, um, so yeah, so see, this is season three, um, gingerbread. And now had, had you, you've seen this episode before, right? Before we rewatched it. Yes. I have seen it before. I, I think probably saw it the first time it was on. Sure. Yeah. So I haven't I mean, seen it. Just in general, what's 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 your what's your opinion on 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 the the way that the show handled witchcraft back in the day? Um, and you met you mentioned that there were there were some some voodoo references um, even in the, the the title sequence and the, um, the you know there's some stuff that yeah. you saw that I completely missed. Well, yeah, my earrings. I know you can't see it because we can't get a close up in here. Maybe I'll send you a picture and, and something can happen later. But um, all Buffy fans that I've seen refer to this as the Buffy Veve. So mm -hmm. it's basically a, a symbol or a sigil like drawing that shows up in the opening credits, you know. And even when they go to the bronze and, you know, hang out and party, there are voodoo flags, better known as drapeau on the wall. So there's all these like, you know, and I think there's, I remember a few times where some of Giles's artifacts were very, you know, voodoo-esque and things like that. So I'm never really happy when there's voodoo without an explanation. It could be worse, I guess that's what I'm saying. And the witchcraft, I think, if anything, that the experience that Willow has and some of the other early witch characters, that's normal, I think, for a lot of beginning witches to be trying things out, to be getting used to what magic is and how they can affect the world around them. So I thought that was definitely very genuine. I, I did think that they had some kind of consultant. I don't remember who it was at this point, but that was what I thought was told to me by somebody who actually uh, knew. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so. The, the the time that it was on so this was a uh, third season 99 show start 97 the movie was i think 94 um this is right around the time of that sort of pop culture revival in the late 90s that you know was with the craft was there's 96 um and uh i think practical magic was was right, right before that as well 98 so there's a lot happening in the zeitgeist in terms of putting witchcraft in popular media. And I, I always thought it was funny on the show that they, 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 they never used the word Wiccan. They only used the word Wicca. Like they used Wicca as a noun or, or an adjective. Like she's a badass Wicca or Wicca. <laughs> you know, it was this weird, like never quite sat right. But um, 
but you know, and you could tell that there's some amount of of you know just that 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 basic amount of research. Like there's references to uh, you know in the gingerbread episode, Amy the 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 witch Amy invokes Hecate to turn herself into the rat. The famous uh, episode, you know thing where she turns into a rat for the rest of the show. Spoilers. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, by the way, you know, this is a 20, 20 something year old show. There will be spoilers. Um, and I also wanted to want to say that there is a content warning as well, because in the show, there are at least images of uh, of dead children. But it's it's in the story. It's all an illusion. So no actual children die in the story, let alone the fact that it's you know a TV show. Um, but fair warning there. Yeah, yeah, it was a little triggering for me. I do have to tell our audience that just as the parent yeah. of a murdered child, like this subject is uh, a bit touchy for me just in general, but yeah. I think it's important. And I think it's something that especially, you know, 20, 25 years later that a lot of people don't know about the history of witchcraft in modern America and the wider world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, we could. the show tended to draw from folklore and fairy tales, mostly from season two to season five, maybe, uh, where there would there would be a, a particular monster or a character from, you know, various folkloric sources. And in this episode, the whole uh, premise of this starts off with Buffy on patrol. Uh, her mother decides, who at this point knows she's a slayer, decides to tag along. And lo and behold, they come across these kids in a playground who uh, who seemingly have been murdered with this spooky occult symbol on their hand that was sort of like a triangle with a squiggle on it. And this freaks out Joyce, her mother, and it winds up snowballing into this whole thing where whereas all this crazy stuff has been happening in Sunnydale for years, but all of a sudden there's now community involvement and uh, candlelight vigils and uh, you know, parents and, and the, the sort of community meeting getting together with the with the mayor. I think this is the first time we see the mayor actually. On the oh, show. is it? The mayor has been talked about, but I think it's his actual first appearance. Um, and so there's this civic uh, response to this. You know, never again, never again. And um, it eventually, just to sort of summarize it, it eventually leads into this huge hysteria and the Scooby Gang. Uh, you know, our, our, our intrepid uh, uh, heroes uh, do enough research and find out that there were news stories over time that had the same two kids going all the way back to, you know, 19th century, um, having been killed and then mass hysteria afterwards. And it turns out that it's actually this, you know, German demon and it's taking the story of Hansel and Gretel um, and in an interesting sort of, you know, sort of politically, this interesting flip where it's not the witch who's the villain in the Hansel and Gretel story. It's whatever the demon is that makes the townspeople fear the witch and persecute her. So it's like it's taking the witch trial notion and kind of turning it on its head there. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's like some giant demon that Buffy eventually kills, and uh, it, it, it's it's true face is is revealed with a German a Germanic uh, um, incantation that Giles and Anya do, I think, um, or is Anya or or I forget. It's uh, Cordelia. She's Cordelia, in the car. Right, right, right. Cord yeah, Cordelia and, and 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 Giles do it. So yeah, then and 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 part of the thing is is that even even Buffy's mother and Willow's mother, who we we only see in this episode. Um, are uh, you know are part of this hysteria, and they basically try to burn them at the stake. So, classic witch uh, witch trial imagery. And on top of a pile of evil bo witchy books, like right. that's <laughs> it's not just that they have at stake. You know, this is like two things coming together in one there's this whole thing about the banned books and the banned witchcraft books which you know obviously we're going to talk about the satanic panic and and uh, west memphis three in a minute but i think that it's interesting that knowledge here you know what i mean in almost a biblical way is is the downfall 
of everybody in this story. And right. we literally see these books going up in flames. And again, again, I think this is one of the reasons it makes it so important right now. It's, uh, well, it won't be when we air this, but when we're taping it, it's banned books month, you know? So everybody still has this on their mind. This is still happening in this context. Yeah, and that's one of the things that really struck me was the, um, yeah, there, there, it gets to the, be a point where, um, you know, the, the, the usual response to this kind of thing is now, you know, is to uh, respond with authoritarianism. And it's, it's tricky because what, what's, th th there's this whole thing around Buffy and especially season three, um, cause there was, there, there was a, a, you know, an episode references to school shootings that happened right around the time of Columbine. And so they had to like, pull the episodes and air them at a later date. You know, the school blows up at the end of season three. So there's all kinds of like sensitive issues around, around uh, violence and adolescence. And, uh, you know, and in this, in, in this episode, it's about kids, but the response is uh, to become authoritarian. So there is a scene where the, the always pretty much fascist principal Snyder, um, the wonderful Armin Sherman uh, going through and basically saying, you know, uh, this is a great day for principals everywhere, uh, you know, where they can they can basically just search lockers, you know, no, no, no whining about students rights, just a, you know, just a long row of lockers and a man with a key. And, and Xander's like, oh, it's is Nazi Germany before he's like, they're going to find my playboys. <laughs> so there's there's definitely this reference to uh uh, to that kind of fascism and searching through, uh, you know, search and seizure, and they remove books from the library. And there's a specific scene where, you know, where Snyder's like, why does, why does a school library need, you know, something blood rights? You know, later on, Buffy's like, you know, I might have to, you know, keep this town from being sucked into hell, but I can't because the anti hell sucking book is, is on, not on their approved reading list. So there's well, they go, of, they go over it over and over again. You know what I mean? Even the book with the incantation at the end, the German incantation, Giles doesn't have that. And he's got to recall it from memory. The symbol that we start out talking about is in the book that's in Willow's hand. And then Buffy has to hide it behind the counter during the library search and things like that. So it's, again, we're talking about this access to knowledge that gets repeatedly denied in this moment of anxiety and fear that's been fueled by these demons so with everything going on right now with you know banned books in school libraries uh, i just read this thing the other day where where someone was put on the the potential you know review list for banning because their last name was gay that's how crazy it's gotten and you know this this under under the guise of removing pornography they are you know removing any books that have even references to queer folks so it's you know what's going on in this in this in the show is very was very resonant with that aspect of it um so one of the things that 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 goes on there too is that you know Joyce starts a group uh called Mother is opposed to the occult. Moo. Moo, known as Moo. <laughs> now, at the time, I'm probably, I'm, I'm sure they probably were like riffing on, on Mothers Against Drunk Driving, which was, a you know, still a big thing back then, uh, you know, at MAD. But, you know, when I'm watching it, I'm, the first thing I'm thinking is Moms for Liberty, right? You know, uh, uh, th this this form of, of, right-wing extremism and fascism under the guise of caring mothers and they're usually you know people that aren't even in the school district they're 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 there to cause chaos and uh and troll and to create fear so that then there can be uh you know control and legislation so because it, it made me wonder what is this demon's end game in the show right like is it is it just chaos like what's you know what's no i i kind of got it that it was sort of feeding off this delusion you know that it was it was getting its rocks off on that because 
I think that that's even a subtext in there that where this whole thing where Xander's talking about, you know, he thinks that, you know, they're still paranoid that he's having an affair or some sort of liaison with Willow. And like, so there's all this appearance reality and this just general air of paranoia that happens where people sort of take everything to the extreme. So I, I thought the Demon's End game was to feed off this paranoia and delusion. That's, that's how my takeaway from it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there, there's, there's definitely this thing where, you know, like at a certain point, the, the, the demon is appearing as these two dead children to Joyce and saying, you know, give, bring us justice. And so, you know, so Joyce it, it, at first has this, has this very sort of, um, you know, she's got this mission. Uh, and then later on, it just, it just devolves into craziness where she's just going to kill Buffy. Um, so there's... yeah, because she can't see Buffy as her child because she's bought into this delusion illusion, for lack of a better term. And I think it's interesting that it's the only time we see Willow's mother because Willow never saw her daughter. And now when she does see her daughter, she sees something that's completely not her daughter and demonizes it as a po and champions the, the demons that are actually in front of her. So like, there's just all these different levels unfolding here, I think in the story. Yeah, Willow's mother, it, it is, it's a very funny scene, especially um, uh, the, the fact that she's an academic and, you know, at the time watching this as an academic and, and uh, uh, you know, it's basically a parody of, of, of uh, I guess, uh, liberal, academia uh you know feminist takes on things because she talks about you know mr rogers being patriarchal and or you know and the king friday lording it over the and so there's this whole thing where, where she she kind of dismisses willow and be like oh well of course you're into this it's this is like this is typical of your age group it's just you know rebellion and mola's like i'm not an age group i'm my own I'm willow group and then and then she you know she eventually gets pushed to the, to the point where she's like I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to rebel. I'm hail Satan and all this stuff. So there, there, there's that aspect of it where the, where the parents, as you said, it's a, it's a great point that you, that they're, they're, they're not seeing their own kids. They're only seeing this illusion of children to protect, not the real children. And again, that is really resonant to the QAnon movement and to, uh, you know, all of those, you know, all the talk from the right wing about groomers and, you know, worrying about drag queens when it's their own, you know, pastors and preachers and coaches and teach, you know, those kinds of people who are, who Boy are, scouts. yeah, yeah, who, who are, who are actually <laughs> doing the, you know, doing the grooming. You know, just like that that awful Sound of Freedom movie thing, where uh, um, you know, the, the, it, the, the it's being it was being lauded by the right wing is like you know this this is this great you know hero of who is protecting children. Um, it turns out he's the one who's actually you know grooming and uh, you know sexually assaulting the women he's working for, and, and you know it, no, it kind of reflects it again. Yeah, yeah. We see it time and again. And I think, I also think that Willow's mother is, I just rewatched the um, West Memphis Three documentary, Paradise Lost. And I think that they have the academic in that, you know, and he's on the stand and they're like, so did you get your degree from the online university that hands out these pamphlets? So I think there's definitely a parallel there where there's sort of a mockery of academia when faced with challenging ideas like witchcraft, especially historically and even now. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there are so many things in, in, the, in the Buffy episode that just resonates and brings up all this stuff that's that's current and and going along with the whole uh you know accusation of grooming and all that one of the one of the things in the in the episode that stood out for me again rewatching it was the fact that um i think you see i'm not sure if you see him in any other episode but the character michael who's the sort of um goth you know male witch that willow's hanging with willow and amy are hanging with and it's and it's clear that he's coded as to you know to be somewhat uh you know queer and um you know one of the first things that happens when 
it becomes it comes out that it, this 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 is witchcraft is that he gets bullied and attacked and buffy has to come in and save him so it's like right there there's also that thing about you know they're going to look for the scapegoat and one of the, one of the scapegoats that you know one of the most popular scapegoats going back to nazi germany is you know is queer folks so there's yeah Definitely, definitely. You know, I've met Damien Eccles a couple of times uh, in New York, and now he's living here in New Orleans. And I think it's very interesting because this whole parallel, we were talking about it slightly earlier, this thing between like, who are the children? You know, these these boys that were arrested and convicted and everything were teenagers, you know, in, in a lot of people and definitely odd teenagers, right? Like sure. ones that are not of the norm, black shirts, Metallica, do th read witchy books, you know, do things differently. And I think that that's something that this genre of fantasy slash horror slash, you know, quirky intertextuality does really well at driving home is that we all know these people and are we accepting of them or are we persecuting them? Are we bullying them? Are we standing up for them when they're bullied? And so often it's a no. And uh, I think that even though these extremes are still there, I think that some people are at least becoming aware of these things. And that part at least I think is good. Yeah. And that's one of the, you know, one of the ways that, that Buffy continues to be the hero is that she's always protecting these you know these people who are who are under threat um and you know and she of course saves the day at the end um so yeah i mean it, it's 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 a really uh resonant episode i mean i keep on saying that but it it it, it really stands out i think as something that even though it was in the, in the late 90s is so relevant today with everything happening with with you know book banning and moms against liberty and the you know anti LGBTQ legislation and 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 just just the the massive amounts of misinformation, um, you know all of that goes you know is is mentioned in this episode you know we you know, the whole thing about misinformation that this is that you know it takes Buffy a while to figure out wait we don't know who these kids actually are. There is no everybody's up in arms about the and and the 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 circumstances of their death, but nobody actually knows anything. It's just all rumor. It's all conspiracy theory, and that's you know that's the playbook one hundred and one for for these extremists. Definitely, and I think it's beautiful that the storyline brings us back to you know magic and Giles. You know, it's not a steal of revealing, but it's definitely his own Germanic incantation that he finds, so we can see the truth. You know, and I thought that was beautiful. I did also want to point out, I think that the specific book burning, which I brought up earlier, was also really relevant. We have a I want to say it's like a political, satirical, very sexual, lusty type parade here in New Orleans for Mardi Gras called Crew de Vue. And last year, one of the floats was, it was fantastic. It was sort of a rotating spit with books on it and flames coming out of it. <laughs> it was fantastic. And it had everything up there, you know, Orwell and, and you know, Catcher in the Rye. And, but we really are at this point still unfortunately, where we are living this kind of disinformation newspeak, right, to bring up Orwell, and where so many people are consuming that as reality. Uh, you know, it's yeah. that, that is the weapon of the 21st century and misinformation. So yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't want anyone to think we're minimizing the tragedy, but they also right, right. need to realize that there's a ton of misinformation out there, as you stated. And I think that as we've gotten more information, which is so amusing because I feel like in this scene, we're talking about, you know, Buffy and the techno mage and all of that, like the way they find out what the symbol is, the way they find out what the truth is, is through the internet, right? There's this great scene where they're like, oh no, Willow can't use the phone. And Oz just gets on the computer and is like, oh, right. we don't need the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Technology saves us again, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's it's the whole thing about how, um, you know, the, the 
bringing bringing the information to light. But part of the part of the the, the point of misinformation is that it, it it stops you from actually solving the problem, and that's what you know. The same kind of thing goes on with about the you know the right wing going on about you know open borders and all that while while voting against border security funding. So it's like they don't actually want to solve anything. They just want the chaos to continue so that they can stoke fear and they can hold on to power and all that. And that's pretty much what this demon is doing. And it's, you know, and, and the thing is, what, you know, you, you mentioned the whole thing about bringing the, you know, the magic brings into light. So like you see the, what this ugly demon, this big, tall, ugly demon looks like. And he's like, oh, no, protect me. And of course, people see it for what it is and, and come to their senses. But it's like nowadays, it's like we all see the demon. We all see what it looks like. And people are still like, yeah, I'll, I'll vote for him. You know? <laughs> so it's... No, it's true. It's crazy. true. I mean, it's because, you know, again, that's what's the beauty of this episode, that everybody has their own perception. But even when they're confronted with something that doesn't jive with that, it's like, it's okay. It doesn't matter. You know? <laughs> so I, I think that we all need to question our things all the time you know this is a theme that we get over and over again in all good stories but just questioning where our beliefs and our thoughts are and and narrowing that down into something that we can have that's I mean I don't know if there's truth is possible but I think that <laughs> understanding is possible indeed yeah so I mean yeah. th this might this might not be the only Buffy episode we do on the show <laughs> um but this this is a, you know this is our first foray into it. Um, in coming weeks, we're going to have lots more great stuff. Every uh, every two weeks, we're going to put out an episode, and I, I will I will put it out there once again to take a look at our Patreon site at www.patreon.com slash Papa Culture Show, and check out all of our great exclusive content, including deleted scenes little extras, little special features. And every now and then we get a, a, a full, another full episode and we'll have lots of stuff coming up there as well. Yeah, fantastic. I can't wait for our next episode. I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe, maybe we should do Eve Spyu. <laughs> I'm springing this on him, everybody. So <laughs> I think, I think it's time we've talked about it you know, peripherally yeah. for a while. I think it's time to do a deep dive. Or yeah, a deep, yeah. Deep I and a half so. an hour. Yeah, yeah well, definitely. We will definitely. see you next time. Thank you again for watching and for subscribing and sharing and for being our fans and friends. And uh, hope you, hopefully we'll get you some suggestions soon and I'm just rambling at this point. So you take over. <laughs> it's fine. Thanks for watching. Keep watching. <laughs>